and good morning. So I just had this idea when I was out for my walk, um, and I actually get this question a lot. I get it from in the comments, and I also get it in my Patreon community, and that is, what kind of business would you start? I get it on podcast interviews. I get it on all sorts of things, and I haven't had good answers. I've had a couple answers teed up, but it was kind of percolating and fermenting in the back of my mind. And so on my walk uh, this morning, I was just like, you know what, let me let me think about this. And so I actually came up with a handful of business ideas that I would start right now if I had the time and money and energy. But as some of you know, I am a disabled autistic person, so I don't have the energy. Um, and I'm pretty busy, so I don't really have the time or the money. So I'm hoping <laughs> that I can inspire a few people out there who do have the time, money, and energy to do these ideas. So Without further ado, here are four ideas of businesses that I would start right now in light of everything that I know that's happening with artificial intelligence and everything that I predict is coming down the pipeline. So the first one, and I've talked about this on a couple of videos, but I want to go into a little bit uh, deeper dive, and that is a hyper-local securities market. And so here's the problem. Here's, here's the problem statement. Right now, if you sign up for a brokerage account, there are approximately 9,000 securities in America that you can buy and trade. Those are stocks um, on New York Stock Exchange, you know, NASDAQ and S&P 500 and those sorts of things. Um, it depends on how you count them, like if you, if you count the pink sheets or whatever. But generally speaking, you have about 9,000 options to choose from, which sounds like a lot until you remember that there are over 5 million businesses in America alone and countless more other uh assets that you could possibly invest in. So most of the American market is not actually in the market. It is all privately owned and it's all locked away behind very arcane securities laws, which means that even if you wanted to invest in a local farm or a local grocery store or even a local data center, you don't have any way of doing that. And to me, this is like kind of a brain dead, simple option, a, a, a path forward. And so basically here's kind of the, the reasoning. If we assume that artificial intelligence is going to dislocate jobs or transform the economy or whatever, it's going to make it's going to make changes, right? That's what technology does. Um, it's going to make changes, and uh, those who own the data centers are going to be making most of the money. So, in light of stakeholder capitalism or um, you know decentralized private ownership or libertarian socialism or whatever you want to call it, if we create a platform and a few legal reforms would also be required to have a hyper-local securities market that allows everyone to invest in these kinds of assets, particularly data centers, but really anything that generates value, such as, you know, rental properties or that sort of thing, that could really transform the economy to make sure that every individual has economic agency in the future and has a way of participating in every aspect of the economy. And then, you know, the follow-up question is, okay, well, if people are already broke, how do you how do you get people to participate? And I'm glad you asked. And basically what you do is through tax incentives, such as negative income tax and other tax breaks, you basically mean, it's kind of the same way that like, um, that, you know, 401ks are, you know, like tax-free or whatever. You basically do the same thing so that any qualified local investment, you either get it uh, tax free, or you actually get that money back at the end of the year to incentivize local investment, uh, as well as just incentivizing participating in the economy until everyone reaches the same level. So this would I actually talked about this with some people, and they they taught they said the securities laws are way out of date, and the the regulatory nightmare of trying to implement this would be insane. On top of the technical problems, the AI that's required, the blockchain that's required. Um, so, but if someone had the the money and chutzpah to <laughs> to tackle this, and you would have huge first mover advantage, and also you'd have a statutory moat in the form of those securities and regulatory compliance, meaning that if you figured out how to get your hyper local securities market approved that would give you kind of a de facto monopoly. Now, I'm not necessarily in favor of monopolies, but it has to be appealing to venture capitalists. So number one, hyperlocal security market based on AI, based on blockchain. And I want to see in the future, instead of 9,000 securities available in America, I want to see 5 million securities available in America. And then once you, once you uh, stick that landing, once you figure that out, It'll generalize globally, allowing people in France to invest locally in France and allow people in Norway to invest locally in Norway and Africa and so on and so forth. Um, I think that this could be a really critical component of the economy of the future. 
Now, uh, business number two that I would start is CEO as a service. Now, I've had uh, consultation clients and and other people in the past kind of approach me with similar-ish ideas. Uh, basically, the way that, that companies are trying to use AI right now is kind of a CEO co-pilot, where it's like, hey, I just want to use AI to, to help my CEO be smarter and be more productive and that sort of thing. But I'm like, what if we actually just reinvent governance of businesses? What if you have CEO as a service? What if you had executive board as a service? What if you had politicians as a service? And But by starting with those particular roles and responsibilities, because those are relatively well-defined, you know, the, the CEO has an obligation to shareholders or stakeholders and employees and regulatory compliance and so on and so forth, pretty well understood. Likewise, the executive board also has a pretty clearly defined roles. And the reason that I would start here rather than just trying to do a turnkey AI, you know, uh, kind of top to bottom AI run company is if you start here, then you have the ability to say, hey, um, let's, you know, with this turnkey solution, create a company, purchase assets, do all that other kinds of stuff. And I know a lot of you out there in the audience, my, my mental model of the audience is saying, you're talking about a DAO, decentralized autonomous organization. Exactly. But the reason, the primary reason that DAOs are not sustainable right now, one is lack of regulatory oversight. So you get rug pulls. But number two is expertise is rare. Uh, there, you know, like, yes, you might say a wisdom of the masses and consensus and that sort of stuff. Consensus is very, very slow and very inefficient, and it does not always produce the wisest outcomes. But if we assume that AI is soon going to be smarter than most humans, then why not just delegate to AI? Um, I was watching the, um, the, the interview with Brian Johnson, the, the longevity dude, and I know I've said mean things about him in the past, but I actually listened to him for three hours yesterday, and I actually agree with most of what he says, so I'm coming around. Um, on, on what he said anyways, but he, like what he did, his experiment was, can I make an AI, an AI algorithm that's better at running my life than me? And he said, the answer to him is unequivocally. Yes. Now, obviously not everyone wants to hand the keys over of their life to an AI algorithm yet, but we're getting there. And if AI hypothetically could be demonstrated to be a better CEO than a human, why not? So I would start building that right now. I think that I think that GPT-4 and Claude 3 are probably close to smart enough at least to make sh small short-term tactical decisions that are superior to humans. Certainly smarter than some humans that I know, absolutely far and away. Um but if you could get this as a turnkey service where it's basically, hey, hire this and then you just carry out the will of your virtual CEO. Great. Um so that's that's idea number 2. So idea number three, and I've talked about this before, I've read about it in my books and I've talked about it quite extensively, is just personalized AI entertainment as a subscription. Basically like Netflix, but AI and bespoke. So that would be personalized novels, personalized music, personalized movies, personalized video games. We're not quite there yet. The, the models are not quite good enough to do all this like, you know, right off the fly, but we are really close. We are really, really darn close. And so now is the right time to build that business so you have the infrastructure and the investment. And you probably could do at least short stories and music, um, like on a uh, personalized uh, short stories and music, and maybe even maybe by the end of the year, like um, like anime, you know, like personalized anime. Uh, but yeah, I think you you now is now would be the right time to do that because again, you know, it's coming it's coming soon. It's coming fast. Um, and there's not, I mean, it's a pretty obvious business model. I think uh, Netflix proved that, you know, big data and streaming and that sort of stuff. Um, and the models are pretty cheap. Like you can generate lots and lots of music and images and soon you're going to be able to do end to end video all pretty much automatically. Uh, so yeah, I don't, uh, honestly, I think that's probably the easiest, most straightforward service. Um, now it, because it's easy and straightforward, it's going to be super, super competitive. So this is probably going to be the, one of the hardest ones because you're going to be competing with Disney and Amazon and Netflix and everyone else. So take that one with a grain of salt. Um, number four is big data curation. So one thing that occurred to me is all these models that we're using, they keep getting updates. So they're only about six months out of date. And it, and it occurred to me, this is going to be a perpetual service where forever and anon, 
like for the rest of human history, however long or short it happens to be, we're going to need data to update models. And when you look at OpenAI and others signing huge deals with Reddit, with Twitter, with New York Times and all these other places, they want data. So if you get really good at curating huge data sets, whether it's text or audio or video or news or tweets or whatever, um, there's a lot of money in that. There is a huge amount of money in that. And so um, back in the day, some of the stuff that I did, I did automatic, uh, you know, Bitcoin trading, uh, crypto trading, um, and then also, you know, pointing machine learning at stock market data. I mean, those data subscriptions that exist are already out there and they're already really expensive. So this is a tried and true business model of just curating data where it's like, here's an API, download your, your, your daily, you know, eight terabytes of fresh data and have fun. Um, that would be a very, very lucrative business model, and it would be pretty easy to set up, I think. Now, I will add at the end one business model that I would not touch with a 10-foot pole, and that is anything to do with robots or drones. Now, one reason is just because that market is super, super saturated. Um, number two is hardware is really, really difficult to do, and then number three is military uses. Um, now, obviously, I understand that, you know, we live in a complicated, messy world and militaries are necessary. I have no beef with that. I understand the, ne the necessity of it. But I personally could not uh, live with myself if I built something that could be used for weapons. Um, but that's a personal, personal thing. So anyways, those are four business models that um, I think should exist. I would like to see all of them exist. In fact, I'm, I'm sure some of them probably already do. Um, but yeah, uh, so if someone has the time, money, energy, and inclination, please make them happen. And then, uh, let me know, hit me up on Substack or Patreon. <laughs> Cheers.